This is the application for the Tapo Wire Free Mag Cam. I will state that I am using a beta of the application, but by the time you're seeing this video, this application should be available in your application store of choice. Starting off, we're gonna say right here, this is our new Tapo Wire Free Mag Cam. In the upper right hand corner here, you have a plus sign. This is how you can add devices to the application. And then the notification bell with the red dot means that, hey, something has gone on. In this case, you can see I have several Tapo cameras and each of them is letting me know, hey, here's a notification. If I select our mag cam, here you can see person detected. And if I select this, it will bring me into the playback region of the Tapo camera. But this is also accessible from another location. So we'll come back to that a little later. When we're ready, if we select our camera icon in the corner there, notice it's not blue, the one next to it is blue. That is privacy mode, so you can toggle the camera on and off right from here. And once it's in privacy mode, you will not get notifications, you cannot look through it, it is not going to be recording anything, so that's a great feature. You can also see the name, location, as well as battery status. I am currently using the solar panel add-on for this camera in order to charge it even on a slightly rainy day as I have right now. If I actually tap and open, we will actually see the live camera feed once it loads up right here. At the top of the screen here, we can see there is the name of the camera, bit rate, battery status, and our settings icon, which we'll come back to a little later. The Tapo Wire Free Mag Cam also supports digital zoom. Simply double tap and you will be automatically zoomed in to as far as it can go. You can pinch to zoom to zoom out. You can also zoom in like that, but if you want the quick instant zoom in, you double tap. I wish that feature was a little different, but you can see right there just the level of clarity that you get. I could see each of those individual leaves over there and that's all just through digital zoom. If I tap on the actual live feed, we have a couple choices. We've got this grid view. We'll come back to that in a moment. Video quality, right now it's at 2K. I can select this and change it from 2K to either 720 or auto. I am currently forcing it to be in 2K for the purposes of this video. We have auto mode, which will be day night mode. So auto, when it gets light enough out, it will turn the night mode off. When it's dark, it'll turn the night mode on. To the right of that, we have Full screen mode, doing that forces its orientation to change. We then have access to our extra options right here. Take a photo, record, mic, and phone, which we can swap away. As well as down here, we have the grid, sound, the light icon, which are accessible from our main page here. They're just further down the page. Now we're gonna come back to our grid icon right here. If I select this, this is one thing that Tapo cameras do very well. Notice we have these empty boxes with plus signs. If I select a plus sign, I can select another Tapo camera that might be online. In this case, the C325WB. And when I do that, what will happen is I get a live feed from both these cameras and I can swipe and you can see I can have up to eight pages of four cameras per page. This is a really nice feature if you like having all of your cameras visible in one location. Now, to get rid of the camera, let's say maybe we don't want the camera anymore, simply press and hold and drag up to remove. And what that'll do is that'll remove it from the camera feed. And then simply tapping on our main camera, I select the box and that brings you back to the single view. Moving down, we have our camera icon selecting this. Well, that will take a snapshot of whatever's currently in view. If I select the record button, well, that's going to be a video recording of what it's seeing right now. And I can stop that and it's being saved to this new location, playback and downloads. We'll talk about that in a moment. Next, we have our camera microphone. You have your slider for how sensitive you want it to be, as well as do you want it on at all? You can simply mute that right there or turn that on. To the right of that, we have this little telephone icon. If I select this, this is two-way talk. You actually are like making a call through this. So I would select tap to call. And now in real time, my voice is showing up on the camera. If somebody was out there talking, they would come back to me. I can mute the microphone from here, but still maintain the call. I can turn off the speaker from here, or I can just end the call. I'm gonna stay here for one moment. We have our options right up here for the camera microphone and camera speaker volume right from there. We're just gonna turn those back on so I don't forget and end our call. Next, we have right here our talk. Well, guess what? If we press and hold this, now we're doing, hey, I'm talking to you. And if I take my finger off, you don't hear me anymore. That telephone call up there, regardless of if you have your finger on 
the button, it will continue. Just like before, we have options for our microphone and speaker right there. Next, we have alarm. Alarm on or alarm off. This is not activating the alarm, meaning it won't be sounding right now. If you turn this on, it does need a person or motion in order for it to go off. But it sounds like this when it does. <laughs> Privacy mode is just that. If I select privacy mode, notice we cannot see anything. Just like on that main screen, it's not recording. I'm not able to see. It's pretty much just hanging out there in privacy mode. I can select exit privacy mode, which will engage the camera again, as we could see right there. There's my live feed. Here we have our light. If I toggle that on, well, it will stay on for five minutes. This way you don't forget to turn it off, which will help maintain the battery. Difficult to see right now since I'm actually doing this in the daytime when that turns on and off. Tagging on or tagging off. This means that if a person or a pet walks through this, it will get a tag. So when you get a live feed box around something and it will say, this is a person, this is a pet. That's a really nice feature. And I'm happy that Tapo has it because they also differentiate uh, color based on what type of motion it's detecting. Tapo care, not required with Tapo, which I greatly appreciate, but they do give you a free trial of your services to make sure if it's something that you want. Here you can see 30 day unlimited cloud storage. Here you can see these are kind of the prices for monthly. If you wanted to save some money, you've got year right there. Swiping aside from cloud storage, the rich notifications, meaning if you want those pictures as part of the notification, this is where you'd have to come for that. And then smart sort, not necessary, but nice that it's there if you want to pay for it. Tapo, the reason I keep coming back to their cameras and liking them as much as I do is that all the stuff that I've been doing, no charge whatsoever for that. Coming down, playback and downloads. If I select this, it's going to show you, is this in the cloud or is this local? So here you can actually see when I was messing around outside, testing it in the rain, we've got our pause, volume, snapshot, recording, and then scissors icon right there, where we can clip the size of this down. Now, by default, because this is on battery saving mode, the clip size is short. But if you had a clip that was like a minute long, you can actually clip this down to the exact size that you want the clip to be. And you can see right in there, it shows you right where the clip is. You can shrink that down to about that size, or you can make it larger. This, this is a great feature that Tapo has that not a lot of other camera companies offer. And then once you clip it down to the size you want, you simply download the clip. I'm gonna exit out of that. If we had our cloud service, we would simply select that and it would show anything that we had in the cloud. I'm gonna pop back over to the SD card for a moment. If I pause, it might be a little difficult to see, but up there in the right hand corner, there actually is a little indicator. And that indicator is for speed of playback. So right there, I can go down to 1 1 16th, or I can bring this all the way up to 16 uh, times the speed. So again, if you have a longer clip to go through, you could scrub through it like it was nothing. One feature that I'm happy that Tapo has updated is if I come into this clip right here, and before I had to hit a record button in order to download the clip. Now I simply select these three dots, select download, and it's downloading to the camera memory. Notice now there's a new tab up here that says downloads. If I come over here, this is everything that I downloaded while I was testing. Notice one of one is complete now. And now that clip exists on my smartphone, no longer just on the camera's SD card. Awesome upgrade. Happy the Tapo finally did that. Coming down, if you had your Tapo Care, cloud video would show up right here and you would be able to sort through it much like we did for the playback and downloads area. And those are all the camera controls that we have, the Tapo wire-free mag camera. Now we move on to the interesting part. These are the settings. Selecting the sprocket icon in the upper right hand corner will bring us into the settings menu for our camera. Here we have our device info. I selecting this, we could change the name, location, and Wi-Fi information, but there's other sensitive information, so we're not going to jump into that just yet. Here we have another toggle on and off for our alarm. This, this is interesting. Detection settings. Notice we have up here our sensitivity settings. Notice it's how far out from the camera would you like it. As we increase that, the range increases. But we've got detection zones. Right now, if I select this, I have all selected. However, a new feature, again, for Tapo, they're listening, they're updating, it's great. Notice here, movement, person, pet. Right now I have it so all are for the entirety of what the camera could see, but I could change this. Maybe I want something different for each. Well, here, person zone. I 
only really care about this corner over here for a person. So that's there. Pet. I only care about this part of my yard. Done. Vehicle. Well, I don't get vehicles, but if I did, it would be over here in the sky and across there. At motion zone, I only care about this little part. Now, each of these zones, you can see, it shows me where they would be. You can select individual zones for people, pets, and motion. And notice, you can have more than one for each. You can have a bunch of zones spread out to monitor specific areas for specific activities. Here you can see a general overlay of how that would look, the uh, monstrosity that I had when I was doing this for demonstrating for you. But this feature alone separates TAPO from its competition by leaps and bounds. So if you need the ability to limit where on your camera feed you get notifications for specific things, this is, this is game changing. We're gonna select back and notice in our detection zones area, you do have to toggle on motion, person, pet, and vehicle in order to have the ability to select those zones. Coming down, we have battery status. Right now it's green and that is because I have the solar panel. But if we have show battery status on or off, notice it will show you little icon. This is what it looks like without. This is what it looks like with working mode. This is your differentiating. In my case, I have it on balance, so it's going to sh do shorter clips. But you could do high performance, power saving or custom where you can adjust everything into how long your clips are, how short it is between triggers. And then you have auto power saving mode, meaning once it gets below 10%, it automatically adjusts the power saving to increase the power saving to make it so that the camera battery will last just that much longer. So hopefully that you'll bring it in and plug it in. Right here we have our solar panel. This is a beta option, but I do have it turned on. Do have this warning, but as you see at the top, it is green, it is actually charging. Auto privacy mode. This is another feature which is great to have, and you don't realize it until you use cameras that don't have it. What this will do is if you don't have a solar panel and you bring your camera into charge, if you have this enabled, once you plug in the camera to charge, that means that it will automatically go into privacy mode, meaning it will no longer be recording you. It will no longer trigger. It will no longer send you notifications. If you've ever tried to charge a camera and walk by it in your house and get notified, you know how much of an annoyance that could be. This is another great feature that Tapo has added. Coming down here, we have our battery percentage levels. This is a chart you'll see. The blue is where it was actually using battery. Green is where my solar panel was actually feeding power back in. And then yes, if you select anything here, it will give you information about that. Battery usage, time usage. Again, clicking on any of these brings you more details. Wake up time. So this will give you an idea of when the camera is most active and when it's getting used. And then our solar input. And then you've got a seven day and a 30 day while I'm recording the application portion of this video. Yes, I have not been using it for 30 days, but I have been using it well over seven days. Moving on, we have another area where we can access the TAPO free trial right here. We discussed that before. Storage and recording, selecting this. Well, we've got our micro SD card. Again, local storage, excellent option. Got to turn that on. Micro SD card, we can come in here. It's set for loop right there. You can format it if necessary. Make sure that you select micro SD card on record schedule. Well, I have it for record everything, but if we wanted to, we could select edit and then hypothetically do a quick clear of my schedule. And now it's not going to record anything. So recording schedule, good feature to have clip setting. This is where I was talking about. You could go into custom and have the ability to do this. Retrigger time, how long it takes in between clips, record buffer, how long pass when there's no longer motion detected. Will it continue to record? And then maximum clip length in the case where I am in the power saver mode, anything past 20 seconds and you're going into custom, but you can go all the way up to 120 seconds if you wanted to. And then here's where you can toggle on the ability to record sound. Some places you are not allowed to record sound with your video. That's how you would toggle that on and off video and display. Here we have our night mode setting. So we've got infrared mode, or we have color night mode, which will use the spotlights instead of the infrared. Coming back, we have our video quality, 2K, 720 for auto. Frame rate, yes, you can actually pick your frame rate depending on your internet stability. 15 frames, 20 frames, or 25 frames a second. I'm doing everything in 25 frames per second because I am stress testing this camera. Privacy zones, well, let's say you don't necessarily want the camera 
to turn itself off completely, but you have a specific area that you never want to actually have the camera view. Like, well, for me, that might be over here. This is where my neighbors are, and I will add that as a privacy zone. What happens now is that will be blacked out. You will not be able to view it, and in your recordings, it does not come in. It'll come in as that black bar. This is a great feature, again, that Tapo has, adding to the versatility of the camera and the application. On screen display, if I select this, well, it's gonna say what will be displayed as part of the video. Right now I have time and date stamp, I like that, as well as the logo, so I know what I'm looking at. We have display text. If I wanted to have, hey, this is warehouse view six, I could do that, and simply by toggling that on. Here we have display on screen, well, right now it shows the speed tag right up there. If I turn that off, there you go. Now it's not gonna show the network speed and then live if I need to know if it's the live feed or not. I like the fact that they show you on the image here to give you an idea of where things are. We're gonna select back. That was on screen. So that was all under video and display. Moving down, we've got our spotlight settings. Selecting this, well, how bright do you want the spotlight to be? One to five, I maxed it out because I want it have it as bright as humanly possible. Status LED light, that's going to be the light on the center of the camera, letting you know what's going on. Network connection, another way to adjust your network. Privacy mode, another place that you can adjust your privacy, turning that on and off. Here we have notifications. Well, for right now I have on. If I try to do rich, it's gonna bring me to the, hey, you want rich notifications, pay for the subscription but you can get activity notifications pushed. So right here you have send me notification always during the day from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., during the night from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., or custom range. I want it all the time, but I like the fact that they give you all of these options. Moving on, we have advanced settings, camera account. Camera account will allow you to set up an account specific to that camera, so it's like an extra step to actually log into the camera. Power line frequency, they allow you to change it between 50 and 60 hertz. If you don't know what that means, just stay out of there. Don't mess with it. Let it automatically adjust for you. Video call mode, we have standard mode, but we also have compatibility mode, which ensures the stability of your connection, so less chance of buffering. Here we have display settings, we have hardware acceleration and compatibility mode. Again, optimized for lower latency type devices and weaker connections. And then diagnostics, on or off, well, if you turn that on, it will allow you to send some data to Tapo to help them out if you ever run into a problem. Share device, well, yep, you can share this device. Keep in mind, they will need to have their own Tapo account in order to do so, and they're not being admins, you're just sending it to them so that they could view the camera. We've got a user guide here if you ever need any information regarding the camera, that's where you can go to find it. You can send feedback from right there. Firmware update, this is nice because, well, you can check for firmware manually, or if you have auto firmware, it will automatically check between a specific time frame that you set up, generally when you're not actively awake and using the device, or during periods of lower network usage, which is great. And then we've got reboot camera. If you ever needed to, you simply tap that and it will reboot the camera. Last but not least on this page, we have remove camera that will remove it from the Tapo app. And that has been all of the settings for the Tapo wire-free mag cam. Now, I am going to go back to the front of our Tapo app because this is the updated application. I wanted to show you a couple of things. Favorites, well, favorites are everything kind of skewed it together. I kind of like the all devices because I can group them by plugs, switches, and hubs. And one big, big feature change for the new Tapo app is the ability to bring in those Casa devices. So now you don't have to have two applications. They can all live in one application. You also have the ability to break things down for locations, which is really nice. You've got automation up there. And then, hey, here's an automation that I have set up for a living room camera. Speaking of cameras, if we come down to the bottom, I can select my cameras and that's going to show me all of my cameras. You can see everything that I have offline also at the moment. You could turn them on to home mode or away mode right from here. Vacuums, if you had any vacuums, guess what? They live right there. Smart. If you set up any smart automation stuff, that's all done through here. There's a shortcut. There's some automations that I have. And then last but not least is your account settings. This is going to bring you playback and downloads of all of your cameras, camera memories for all of your cameras, firmware, all of your firmware for the cameras, notifications, again, all cameras, device sharing, all cameras, and then link Tapo with Casa. You will need to do that when you first set up the application. Third-party services, widgets, there are lots of things, but the account area is really going to be for 
all of your devices. But that is a look at not only the new Tapo app for the Tapo wire-free MagCam, but also overall the new Tapo app, period, for all of your cameras and all of your other Tapo devices.